The global elite assembled at Davos have one job, and that's to imagine how an automated digital capitalism could work, and for everybody. The capitalism we've got now clearly doesn't work. Sure, you can print $12 trillion and that will send stock markets and house prices soaring, but the long-term sources of growth like rising populations or better education are running out. And technological innovation, contrary to all the hype, isn't really contributing to growth we can measure. And that's because its main effect is to collapse the price of everything. In the meantime, the global system is breaking up. It doesn't start with trade, but with things like the internet, or different encryption laws, or even artificial intelligence, where suddenly there's an arms race. Meanwhile, all over the developed world, people are losing their belief in mainstream politics, in democratic culture, and even in the rule of law. If all you get from rising growth is rising inequality, that's going to get worse. That's what's driven Donald Trump and what's driving support for the far right in Germany. They say with these Davos events, you've seen one, you've seen them all. As one World Bank economist put it only this week, these are people who won't pay the living wage, but they will sponsor a symphony orchestra. But I can see a change. The original idea behind Davos, a kind of confident, liberal, democratic capitalism, has become more of a thin veneer. And it's the crooks and the autocrats and the demagogues who are starting to set the agenda. The choice facing people at Davos is find a new form of capitalism that stops driving inequality or popular pressure is going to pull the global system apart and push politics to the extremes a lot.